Beats, we're talking to Miguel. He is a drummer, guitarist, and recording engineer who works at Rob Rowe Music. And currently, he is composing music for his own album, which is like drum and bass and trance. So I hope you guys enjoy. So you started as the drummer for Evolver. What are your favorite memories from that time? Uh, well, okay, I've got to say it's probably touring. Mm. That was mm. the best, yeah. Um, obviously, some good times, some hectic times, you know. Yeah, yeah. Always got to keep the fans like entertained, especially the love to show and after they want to chill out with you and buy shots, have party and whatever you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've got to say, uh, recording actually as well, most of the recording in the studio. I mean, because that's actually where uh, that's actually where I first started touring anyway. So I knew nothing about touring the country in a South African band. Yeah, yeah. Until that, so definitely the touring. Um, the show at the last shows, actually, you know everything about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Everything, to be, everything. Okay. So, except maybe carrying on the drums, but in the end, we got well, yeah. people doing that, so that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you most proud of from that time? From that time, um, I think the live shows and like the consistency of like being a musician in a live band, mm, mm. and it's cool to like. Obviously, every time you play, the sets just get better and better and better because at the same time, it's a practice during all your shows. Um, and writing with the guys was cool. Um, mm. That was awesome. Do you miss being in a band? I don't, actually, to be honest. Well, maybe because I work in a studio and I get to play the kids, I don't know, every second week. Yeah, you, you don't know, need that whole Don't live. really need the whole live thing. And uh, I think the electronic side of things pulled me at an interest. Like, get, I was way more interested in that. Yeah. Like, immediately, especially when I started writing my own stuff. And then obviously you don't have to rely on an extra file of people, band yeah. members, and then A and R's and this and fan bases. You can just do it your, yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you can just whip out your laptop, and it's still being produced in your own studio. So it's not like you're just playing and playlisting other people's songs. Mm. I like to produce stuff that's I produced that I'm, you know, making scratch. Yeah, you're your own artist. So no, yeah, exactly. wrong with that? yeah. No, no. <laughs> Since then, you've become a great artist, a great recording engineer, composer, producer. Was that like a natural evolution for you? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, when I like when I first when I first got to Rob Roy, all I wanted to do was carry on playing a lot of bands, mm -hmm. like we were just saying that, and that was actually what I was mainly focused on. And then obviously, um, because of recreating tracks for commercials and jingles and you know corporate events or whatever. Um, it grew on me how easy it is and how cool you can make something so quickly with software and electronic stuff and it's you don't necessarily uh, lose the music at all because mm. that's that I don't agree with I mean I've heard some electronic music from Swedish guys Dutch guys any any good producer you know American guys as well they just they get the music properly in there and you can hear it yeah I yeah. mean it doesn't always have to be a guitar and an old school drum kit and an old bass and a screaming emo Frontman. Mm. That's I don't believe in that because I mean we also made some stuff that's melodic, but it's completely stuff digital. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where does that drive to further yourself come from? Uh, listening to other people's stuff uh, all the time. Uh, yeah, I'm actually quite. A, I was bad at that because I actually criticised myself way too hard, mm. and but in the end, it actually turned out for the best, and I knew it would. Everyone's always like, ah, you got to be, you got to, you know, don't take it so hard on yourself. But that I didn't believe in. Mm. So like, um, like a guitar playing, I was telling you yeah. just now as well. Like, uh, um, I could play anything. That was drums and guitar were my first instrument. But be before drums took over as my first instrument, guitar was. So mm. I would I'd play and I try to do something that uh, I thought was impossible, whether it was on YouTube or one of the albums I heard or owned or whatever. And then I'd sit down and I'd work it out until I got it 100. percent And that would be the same thing for music production. Uh, I listened to only the guys that. They're amazing at recording, producing, mm, mastering, mm. editing, everything. And like, you listen to them, you listen to them, you try and make your mixes like them, and you go and you go until it sounds even better sometimes. And then they bring another album that sounds even better than that, then you reference that album, and it just mm. it layers and layers and layers. So, yeah, it's what well, it's experience, it's, it's practice, doing being the practice, keen. it's being keen, and so, yeah, yeah. Like motivation, of course. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, that comes first. If you don't have that, nothing's mm -hmm. gonna sound good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What other skills do you want to learn? Maybe like in terms of furthering, maybe keyboard. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I've got the basics. Uh, like I said, I'm more on the guitar side of things. Mm. But because you've got your modern technology now, you can literally play your, your guitar into software like yeah, a, like a piano mm. or like a MIDI controller or anything. So I mean, yeah, I mean I know the basics of scales. So 
I think piano actually would have been the one. Be more of a fluid composer. Yeah, because I mean yeah. that's the guitar and drums is fine, but. And there's such a different feel of composing when you're composing on piano as to. No, 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 that's definitely, definitely true. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot more you can do, I think, on piano in terms of structure and. Uh, chord structure. Chord structure and, and like, yeah. But I mean, I still get it done, but maybe I'd have to like take it once or twice, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Like, drop in and punch in, and but yeah. Just have another instrument to play. Just have another instrument to play. <laughs> 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 What advice would you give to someone who wants to broaden their horizons? Uh, learn from <clears throat> everyone around them. Because um, I've noticed a lot of, uh, look, I mean, uh, in our country our music's like, it's pretty slow going, it's, it's come up a lot now. Mm. But uh, the reason why other countries are so, especially it's, you know, the kings of entertainment, like the USA obviously, yeah. they all take from each other. Whether they hate each other or not, or whether they think they're better than the other person, doesn't matter. Mm. They all learn from each other, they take. They give advice, the person takes advice, they're not scared to ask for advice. Mm -hmm. If you do not ask for advice, you won't, you won't, you won't get anywhere. Yeah, you I'll can ask, Yeah, I mean, I went to a, I studied at SFC uh, in, uh, in Johannesburg, um, and uh, I studied there for a few years, got my diploma, but as soon as I came to work at Rock Roy, I, uh, I worked under Andrew, the head engineer, mm -hmm. and I learned basically everything from scratch again. Oh, because wow. what he taught me was like, they didn't teach me that. Wow, yeah. the actual hands-on... Look, I mean, they, they do, they definitely did practical and stuff, but it's different being put in a spot and knowing, okay, sweet, now you've got a commercial to do and go, you know. That's what you need, yeah. That's what you need mm. to do and like, yeah, so just doing the practical every day, practical, practical, you know, mm. just doing it, doing it, doing practice. And obviously, like we said earlier, like being keen on it as well. Because yeah. if you want it better, you can't just, you can't just like, you can't be narrow-minded like that. You've got to take from everywhere. I mean, that's why also it works for music genre as well. If you can play rock, folk, whatever, electronic, mm -hmm. whatever, if you put that all together, yeah. it's, it's amazing, seriously, it's, yeah. it's awesome. So, What style of music inspires you? Uh, digital music, uh, <laughs> it does, I used to, look, I mean, all music, actually, actually, yeah, I'll take it back, if it's, if it's, if it gets to my, you know, if it gets in the feels, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then it's an awesome song, I mean, I don't care if it's r and I don't care if it's pop, if it's a house track, if it's, Sounds cool, and I'm bobbing my head, and I'm feeling it. I like it. Yeah. And yeah. like, yeah, even country songs. Country songs are they super good at that stuff. They yeah. sing right into the, you know, oh, the heart. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, all genres is, is good for me, but I, I like, uh, I like electronic stuff. You know, mm. I know it's not too sentimental, but uh, <laughs> maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what attributes do the greatest session musicians have? Yeah, like what you've seen, you know, like yeah. the people that are really great at it, you know, like uh, are there any characteristics they have in common? Or... Yeah, they are all super humble. Mm. Every single one of them. All the guys that blow the guys out the water mm. are the guys that do not say anything about it. They just throw them more in the sessions, practicing, practicing, practicing. And that's exactly it. It's exactly mm. what we just said now. Like, uh, if you want to learn and get more experience, take in from people like that. Yeah. Don't think that you could just, you know, you stop learning, it's possible. Yeah. Take, like do stuff and that's why I was so hard on myself mm. and even people that came to play in session yeah, and I knew I could do the session by myself and let's say guitar with drums yeah. but getting a different session drum or different guitars and just see what they would do different and learn from it I mean, if you don't learn from it you, you won't bury yourself so yeah being humble with the musicians is it's quite a thing and yeah. they, they're all carry that luck it's like hardwired in them and you just uh, yeah they're always so they're so chilled and humble and smiley and happy because they're not competing with anybody. They're not you know? competing with anyone. And, yeah. and it's, not, it's not like they're like, oh, I don't need to compete because I'm the best. Not even that. It's mm. just the fact that they love doing what they do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, it just naturally falls into place because they like, cool, well, I really want to, I love music. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get as, as good as I can. Mm. Playing guitar or sax or whatever, you know? Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Now they all, I haven't actually met one session user that I don't like <laughs> ever. Oh, that's really cool, yeah. <laughs> no, they're all good, they're all good, yeah. What is the most important thing to remember when you're writing music for a client? Oh, okay, brief. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely brief. As much yeah. as, look, I mean, we get different, uh, we get different briefs in terms of, uh, it also works in rights. If someone likes, let's say, like a Coldplay song, mm. and they haven't got the rights to the track, and, you know, the record label doesn't release it or whatever, we have to make a sound like, so it's like a, a version of the track, but, in the same style but different chords, maybe different tempo, different structure, yeah. so it doesn't sound the same. But in terms of brief, also um, it's really cool when a producer like engineer like, like myself gets 
gets like let's say a, a brief and says you do what you feel that's the best words that i could hear because mm. i love that that's then you've got freedom obviously yeah yeah but when you get all the clients sitting here and in here and like um there was a strict brief and you need to stick to that it's still fun but you you know that you can't like uh like broaden the whole you know mm. spectrum of the style or the song or the structure because you need that song we need like a it's a very strict like an art class, exactly. Let's mm. do like an art class reference, and that's what it sticks to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's hard to stick to it sometimes because you know it works well. You know it will actually work better as well, but the clients just like mm. it's very simple, which is good because simplicity is mostly most of the time is the answer. Yeah, yeah. One, exactly. So yeah, just staying on the brief, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> what are the joys and difficulties of remixing songs? It's quite a complex question, but it's not. Not too hectic for you, but like there's two different types of remixing. Remixing, as in terms of making like a modern song or modern, a more modern version of the song, yeah. then that's really fun, especially if it's a song that you you liked in general, like a, let's say an old 80s track yeah, yeah. that you thought maybe would sound really cool with a house beat on it and uh, more up tempo and stuff, which is obviously actually 80% of the time that's what's being done now. Yeah. Everyone just yeah. uses samples. Recreates what they heard in Nina Simone. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Kanye is the pop yeah, daddy, yeah. the everybody. Everyone's mm. just got the the loop from the 70s to 80s, mm. put on a nice kit, nice bass sound, put in new vocals in, most of the time it's hip hop or rap, and you sort it. So making new tracks now is really easy because you can just sample from what good music was back then. I mean, and I'm also, I'm not gonna lie, I must be honest, the crews that came from the old music still are way better than any crews that come out now. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can do a lot more now, but we've heard it all, and maybe it's just because all that old music was so fresh to everyone, you know? Yeah, maybe. And the melodies were always so strong and good and stuff, and yeah, I mean, remixing is fun, but in the end, you're remixing all the good songs that were really good. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah, it's, uh, it's basically what it is today. You do get a lot of guys that compose their own stuff from scratch, but and it's all good, but everyone knows that success, like that hits, always comes from like a nice little sample in the background. Mm. It was used, you know, if it's a string section or like a brass section. You yeah. Know. Uh, you joined Rob Rowe Music about seven years ago. Yes. Uh, How have you grown in that time? A lot. That's exactly what I said before. I, when I went to a study, I, I thought I knew everything, but then when I came into Rob Roy, mm. uh, getting thrown in the deep end and stuff, because uh, Andrew's wife had a child and stuff, and I got oh, put straight hard. into the deep end and mm. uh, he prepared me for it, taught me some stuff that I didn't even hear or study yet. Well, I probably did study, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, in terms of, uh, I could never produce that well and then I ended up producing and then since I can produce and engineer, Rob just throws me in here with a brief and I do everything myself, which mm. is what I couldn't, I couldn't have done seven years ago, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I grew a lot of Rob Rob, obviously my boss has got like a, a lot of insight on the stuff. Mm. A lot. Even the modern stuff, he, he's good with like hooks and he knows what song will work. Yeah. And in terms of advertising, he's uh, composing for jingles or picture, he's, he's really good at that stuff. And uh, he's made us really good at referencing songs. If the client's coming with a picture and they've got no idea what they want to do, Rob's really mm -hmm. good with uh, like getting a genre or, you know, a style of music to put over the picture and stuff. Yeah. Melts in perfectly, so... It's been, yeah, yeah the, the producing's been insane. Um, people skills, actually. Way better. Yeah. I had people yeah. skills, but they're, like, much better now. Dealing, you know, dealing with clients. Yeah, All yeah. the time. So you get you get the hard asses and you get the guys that will always start a sentence, sentence off with, I'm not a musician, but... Okay, you know, right. So like, <laughs> preface, um, exa yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said. <laughs> trying to but, interpret what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, clients, that stuff. Uh, yeah. Have you picked up any tricks of the trade? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's 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 actually the most stuff I have, especially in terms of mixing, uh, mastering, composing. Mm. I mean, the, the cool thing about working at Rob Roy is the genres we go through is literally all the genres. We've been yeah. asked to do classical from the 60s. Mm -hmm. Recreation from the 70s, regression from the 80s, 90s, all the way up until now. So, Andrew's taught me well with how to get sounds as an engineer with like a, you know, an old kit and like a, an old guitar sound or a bass sound. And I learned that when I was here. I would have never been able to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you still learn as you go, but like I said, take stuff in. Andrew taught me everything, gave me the tricks of the trade. And then I, I took that and then I added to it, added to it, added yeah, to it. And yeah. then, yeah, I then ended up producing just by myself and mixing by myself and then yeah so I've learned everything actually yeah. 
everything. Wow. Yeah, like, you know the theory, you, know, you learn it in your colleges and stuff, but if there's anything like, you need to know, you it's just, career, yeah. You know, in yeah. This industry, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah.